has not lived that experience where you know you're trying to walk out the door and someone's dragging on your leg no no don't don't leave i want things to remain the same i want to be who i have always been i want you to be who you have always been in this same scenario so that we can stay the same i'd like to point out that something that i've seen continually every time there is opportunity for transformation for shift to move to that next level everything in your in your past or what is your present that you're looking to move out of will look to pull you into it. it but it's really self it's really this idea of are you able to let go are you able to free yourself to receive this new you know un unclench your hands from holding on to the past because if we don't you know there's that stretch and you know we split in two and the thing that most people don't understand is you lose nothing your mother still loves you. Your grandmother still loves you. I'm sure there's still a woman crying for you in an <laughs> in a office somewhere. <laughs> Probably. <laughs>
on the on the moment. I sure was. <laughs> Do you remember? What yes, you I remember. <laughs> <laughs> I glazed over that. So, what had happened was, it was I had one more month left on my lease, and of course I was inspired to leave, but I didn't think it all the way through. It was just the the, ins- the inspiration and motivation to be congruent. I wasn't congruent financially, right? So you got to be congruent all the way. And uh, the thing is, I had another check coming, and I would have been straight, but the way how the month landed and my bank account was looking, it wasn't working out. So I was in this mode of, dang, this is stupid. Why did you do that? But, you know, yeah, you're talking to yourself left and right, but you know you needed to do it. It served you. So I was working with Laota at the time, and she subscribed to me or prescribed to me to do Ho'oponopono for three hours. Now, we tell our clients one hour a day will keep the negativity away. But she said three hours. Best believe I was meditating for three hours. I was hanging out at my homeboy house. Hey, you mind if I go in your backyard? It's just I got to do this thing real quick. <laughs> I got I to I get it in. And I was, let, I was sharing with them my process, and I could see where in that moment of what I needed from the universe, how all the, uh, the bashing, the self-punishment for the action that I took it was blocking out anything that could potentially come in to help. So that was some of my first glimpses of working with Lalita, where I saw, well, long story short, the money came from somebody I know, from somebody that they know, and somebody that they know. How'd that happen? Oh no, clearing yourself, you know? I had to clear myself to, to make a way for the universe, and everything was peachy. I was able to, to live out my last month of rent, and I'll stop the story there. I'm really glad that you shared this because this uh, brings to bear that our manifestations are us. Yes. Our experiences are us reflected back to us holographically and through the fractal of all that is. So this is so important that you can see it. It's so important that we all understand the idea that everything that's happened to, happening to us is us. Our incongruencies, the victory that he had when he put down the phone, and he felt victorious, and he felt like, I'm not going to do this. I'm, this goes against what I think. That was supported by the eventual congruency of cleaning and clearing with loving self, being in reconciliation, yeah. moving forward in thankfulness, and you did it. And it was a, a, it, it, nothing like that had ever happened to you before, as I recall. No. It was, it felt miraculous because the money came, again, it was three or four people separated from me, four degrees off. And then the money came in literally the day before I needed it. But again, having to address self, everything is self. I see how I could have blocked it, but I see exactly how we all have the power to to change our circumstance from the inside out because that was me. You know, the financial, the not having the money, you know, even the decision, it was all me. So uh, I'm ready for the next story if you you <laughs> Well, this, I want to point out that this was uh, the reward for congruency, that you received a miracle because you were willing to step off into what you knew you wanted to do. You didn't sit there and continue to suffer. Yeah. You stepped off, and then you did the actions that made you congruent, and then the, automatically you're rewarded. If you ask, you are rewarded. So I think that's great. And I want to just wrap up that story by saying that's your relationship with you and your congruency in a situation where you feel like you're being aggressed by something you chose, like a job. But we can go on to the next story. We can. So fast forward. So I'm still working with Laota. I'm traveling across the country, living in different places. I stayed in Chicago. I stayed a little bit in Colorado. I stayed in the mountains of Northern California. It was kind of like isolated. You know, so I'm on my hippie spiritual journey. I moved back to Florida, where I'm originally from. And I'm living with my grandmother at the time to get back on my feet. And around this time, I had taken the level one property clearing class with Laota. And so I'm feeling myself. You know, I'm seeing what is possible, how I can affect change in physical reality. So fast forward, fast forward, I get into a relationship. Actually, before I even go there, there was a moment where I needed to get congruent with what I wanted to do with my life. 
I ended up working a nine to five again. It was a pretty good job. I was a cruise consultant, travel agent, and suit and tie and whatnot, but with my own flair to it, it still wasn't feeding my soul. And one of my manifestations was to be in an environment that supports me vibrationally. Uh, and I was checking with my guidance, how much of my energy should I dedicate career-wise to uh, this energy healing idea? And how much of this should I dedicate to art? Energy healing was a 10, art was a six. When I got clear on that, an opportunity opened up from Laota. to, hey, you wanna come over here to Fort Myers? Open up a brick and mortar location? You know what I said, yes, of course. So here is, this, this ushers us in into another guilt and appeasement story. So remember, I moved back in with my grandmother. I'm helping carry a lot of the weight in the house. And there's other family members there who are not really trying to do much. And I knew that, man, if I leave, what is my family gonna do? You know, so I, there were feelings of guilt. And I had to confront the appeasement because I could feel my grandmother's dissatisfaction for me leaving. She felt abandoned and, and uh, but again, all of this is an expression of me, right? This is something, it's, and it wasn't so much that it was them. I had to confront the, my own guilt. So not only did I face that with my family, the job that I was working, they wanted me to stay. I told let's, them- Let's break it down. It. Let's, let's take it. So here we are, you're trying to survive. Yes. You're not, you're an artist and you would like to be in the energy business. But you're doing something else. You're selling cruises, right? Yes. And you're supporting and doing things to assist your family, your DNA. And you feel good about what you're doing. And the job feels good about you. They've got yeah. an artist and a healer selling cruises. They're like, that. they're loving that. I'm sure you like healing and they were. <laughs> artistically selling cruises. I was changing the, the environment. I, I was. Little, making little pyramid things, origami for the people, <laughs> teaching them about mindfulness. It was it was kind of crazy. So you were actually being who you wanted to be in the environment as far as the environment would take you. Yes. And so really we're speaking about this idea when you talk about your grandmother, we're really talking about you, how you felt about how she felt imposed upon you. That and right that's there. what you're calling appeasement. You're yes. saying, I know she wanted me to stay because she loves you, because you pay bills, <laughs> you know, because she'd be lonely without you. So the, all of those things are in the pot, right? Yeah. And so what you're saying is like, I am clear that 10 is what I should be doing and I shouldn't necessarily be doing it at the desk, at the office while I'm selling cruise no, tickets. No. So what happens next? So what happened was, <laughs> so I made a decision I said, all right, I'm gonna do this. And of course I got the sign off from Laota. I was already traveling to Fort Myers at the time to assist with classes. Look, I was trying to be in the energy field of Laota and of the sun. I was, they called me the everything man. I helped with whatever I could just to, cause I felt the support, right? So she signs off on it and I come back to Miami and I knew I had decisions to make. So the job, they go, we don't want you to leave. The supervisor starts crying. I'm like, oh, really? You crying? And uh, she offered me a work at home position. It was the thing that I wanted when I signed up for that job. And she goes, you know, wherever you're moving, we'll make it a work at home position. And I was like, oh. but I already knew I had to leave everything. And so, like I said, I decided and I turned it down. I said, give me a week. I'll get back to you. But I already knew. And it was funny because my mother, she was picking up on it too. She's like, I think you're gonna move over there with those people. <laughs> and I didn't tell her anything. But you know, that mother's intuition, right? So I ended up sharing it with my family. Hey, look, Pam, I got an opportunity. I'm gonna move. Uh, this is something I'm really passionate about. No, no, I'm like, oh, I gotta do it, I gotta do it. And you know, I, they, I, I saw as I pulled back from how I felt about it, again, that guilt and the appeasement, it actually became easier for them. Of course, they didn't want me to go, but you know, they, there was a warm uh, faring off or sending off. So that worked out well. I want to mention this idea that those people, that's us, that's me, those people, <laughs> that the idea of what 
everyone saw, the people who you were working for, your family all saw the beauty of who you were. They saw the artists, they saw what was inside of you. All of us saw it. However, the idea of getting you to do what they wanted you to do was happening on the other two fronts and it wasn't happening with other son. No. So we weren't trying to uh, seduce you or make you do anything or uh, bribe you with things. We were just saying, we're here. We recognize your, your skill, your beauty, your talent. If you should decide to come this way, that'd be good. Yeah. But there was no bribery. There was none, none of that. They were free to the E, <laughs> unattached. And at the same time, I knew this is what I called forth. And it would, it would be a sin to self and the universe if I was to not step forward into it. So again, I, I knew what I needed to do, and I did it. And uh, I mean, that's just essentially the end of that story, but there's more carryover well, when I get to Fort Myers. And there's Myers. more to this, because in that stepping out, there's freedom. In that, uh, that ability to step beyond family, to step beyond expectations, to step beyond financial security into something that was not known was really where you grew. Yes. It is the uh, challenges that are in front of us that force us into growth. Had you stayed with your family, you would still be who you are. Yes. However, you would also be you with uh, whatever that meant. Just like the job, you could have stayed at the job and worked at home and been at home working at the job and you would have still been who you are to that extent, but you are now something more. A whole lot more. Something you have other. grown into something more because you were able to break the sphere of the um, what everyone wants you to do. People are crying in the office. Tears are rolling down their faces. Stay with us. Stay where you are. Stay being who you are. We want you. We'll give you what you said you wanted. Is that accurate? That's accurate. <laughs> yeah, it was so unattractive to him. Like, but what I want <laughs> is in another town, so two hours away. Who has not gone through that? Who has not lived that experience where you know you're trying to walk out the door and someone's dragging on your leg? No, no, don't, don't leave. I want things to remain the same. I want to be who I have always been. I want you to be who you have always been in this same scenario so that we can stay the same. I'd like to point out that something that I've seen continually, every time there is an opportunity for transformation, for shift, to move to that next level, everything in your, in your past or what is your present that you're looking to move out of will look to pull you into it. it but it's really self. It's really this idea of, are you able to let go? Are you able to free yourself to receive this new? You know, un unclench your hands from holding on to the past. Because if we don't, you know, there's that stretch and, you know, we split in two. And the thing that most people don't understand is you lose nothing. Your mother still loves you. Your grandmother still loves you. I'm sure there's still a woman crying for you in, a <laughs> in an office somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> Probably. <laughs> you lose nothing when you choose you. When you choose, this is really not about not choosing someone else. This is about choosing the deep-seated soul desire that may have kept you in prison if you had listened to others. Always choose you. You are your best bet. Yes. You have another story? I do. Introductory energetic clearing. This shamanic clearing specifically targets addictions, negative thought forms, anger spheres, and more. Of the Sun cleans and clears the primary things affecting our energetic body and gives us tools to support our healing journey. This service is priced perfectly for your regular energetic maintenance. Recommended use is once a month. For more information and sign up, visit ofthesun.com. So fast forward. I get to Fort Myers, things are looking good, I'm free, flap, flap, and I like to shift into the idea of relationships. So I start dating again, right? And you know, it's looking good. However, again, there's that guilt and appeasement, 
surfacing back up, didn't quite put it down. And that, that's, that's something like when things continue to reoccur, that's because you, you haven't fully put it down within yourself. It continues to project in your reality to present and you got to deal with it. So, so we're 32% down in our appeasement at this point? Yeah, somewhere around or, there. The, your tank is not full? No, it's not. <laughs> it, it, it dropped significantly from that experience, but they were still So you escaped left. it into the new experience, and then you find out that inside of you? It's still there. So you attract to you a relationship that shows it to you? Mm-hmm. And what happened? And what happened? What happened? I'm, I'm going to go into the details because you know me. I'm a little transparent. So I'm in a relationship, and I find out that my partner at the time, she's like, she's upset with me. And in this time period, I'm working a lot. A man of purpose, right? You know, I'm over here uh, teaching classes, doing workshops. A lot of my time and energy is in the company. And what that meant at that time was my partner wasn't really getting all of my energy that she wanted. And it was act it primarily was happening in the sex life. So we had the situation where she brings to me, basically like, we're not having enough sex. And I'm like, in that moment at the age I was in, I was like, I don't know whether to think if this is a good thing or a bad thing. <laughs> you know, like, whoa, this is my first time experiencing that. But the weight of having to perform and do something, I'm like, but I'm over here with purpose. And so I ended up appeasing, right? I fell into it. So fast forward, fast forward. Somewhere, I'd like to yeah. say something about that. I think this is something that comes up in many relationships when the, the partners are not uh, sharing the same levels of desire. And in every situation, the answer is always, if I am inspired, the answer is yes. If I am not inspired, that's not a yes. You know, inspire me to be inspired to do what you want me to do. If there's inspiration there, then it's much easier to do whatever it is you want. And if you want me to eat dinner, cook a dinner that inspires me to eat it. That's right. You know, it's, it's very much like that. And uh, what happens is that people present things like, you should eat the same old dinner that I always make with the same level of gusto because I made it. I'm like, but it don't taste it. It's not inspiring. It's not making me. So there, So are, are we in that space? Yeah, totally. And, you know, I'm engaging in uninspired ex experiences. <laughs> Until uh, there were several events, uh, and again, in respect of our time, trying to keep the stories brief but because um, it's all about you yeah the story is all about you exactly there was uh, actually let's let's put a pin in that i was again seeing the guilt and appeasement in that relationship i saw it in the business life i saw it with friends where i was finding myself doing things that i didn't really want to do but i did it anyway because there was some part of me that cared too much about what people think what are you gonna think if i say no you know, because I, I want them to see that I'm, I'm a good person and I care about them. And I was engaging in these experiences, devaluing myself, you know, whether it was how much money I was getting paid to do things from business wise or uh, helping people that I did not necessarily want to, to help. But I was so concerned about how they thought about me. This is very important because this is the solar plexus. Yeah. This is our concern about how we fit into our universe. How do we fit in through our family? How do we fit in through our spiritual experience, whether it's church or whatever it is? How do we fit in? What is the image we want to project as a lover to another person? How do we want our children or our parents to consider us? All of that's on the line. I want you to do so and so. Now it's on the line. Or I'm not going to think about you the way you want me to think about you. And you don't want to be a disappointment to a lover yeah. or an employer or a friend. And so now we have to talk about who are you? Are you making your world? Are you letting other people make your world? So it sounds like you're at that point. Oh, yes. And everything was climaxing. It was, it was getting to the pinnacle uh, everywhere. And, but primarily, again, in this, in this romantic relationship. And it got to the point where it was as if I had a wake-up call. 
Okay, so I, I want to share with you all, Lao Tzu has shared these little tidbits about guilt to me throughout the years. She'd say things like, there are no guilty trees and leaves. There's nothing guilty in nature. And I was like, damn, you're right. You're right. There's nothing <laughs> guilty in nature. I'm nature. So how that make that make sense? And then uh, the idea of you owe no one anything but the truth. And, and I'll um, put an exclamation point to that. No one owes anyone anything except the truth. You do not owe anybody anything except the truth. When you start to live your life that way, it frees you. Then you can be generous and give them what you'd like to give them. You can answer their requests and fulfill them, but you don't owe anyone anything. Of course, those who are within your care, if they're children or the elderly, you are obligated to make sure that they're, but other than that, everything else you give, you don't owe anyone respect that does not inspire you to be respectful to them. You do not owe anyone love who has not inspired love within you. What you owe them is the truth. You owe them like, I would like to love you, but I have not, it has not been earned. I, I am not, uninspired. <laughs> Please continue. I have not seen that the relationship has given me reason to trust you or respect you or I would like to. I'm not opposed to it, but I don't owe you that which you call for because it has not been initiated and inspired from within me. I would love to love you. Give me reason to do so. So would that be? You're hitting ping, 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 everything on the head. And uh, specifically the idea of support, respect, I, I was feeling like that wasn't present in the relationship, but I knew it was me. Like, dude, you're not giving you the prop uh, right. the appropriate levels of respect. Hence, <laughs> what's in front of you. And so I made the decision to step off. And it was a very heightened time, but everything in my soul, again, I'm at this point, I'm working with my guidance. Like Lao Tzu teaches people, here out of the sun we teach, how to work with your guidance to get yes and no information. You ask a question, you know, you can get a clear, distinct an answer so you can know which way to go for what's in your best and highest interest. And I knew in that moment, it was in my best and highest interest to go, to leave, you know, respectfully. And what serves me, what's in my best and highest interest serves all parties involved. You know, if I was to continue enabling whatever and uh, continue to appease, it would have been horrible for everybody her and everyone included so this is very important this idea that your peace of mind is everyone's peace of mind yes. your joy is everyone's joy your goodness is the goodness of all yes we have to recognize that that when we bring less than our goodness less than our glory into a situation there's less than the glory there let us honor the truth of who we are and let that be the truth like i owe you the truth the truth is I'm not quite there yet. I'm not ready to do this. I'm not convinced. And I, it's not up to you. It's up to me to feel that so that the, we can then move forward into the victory of freedom. Yes. So no one is in prison. Well, I don't enslave you by not loving you the way you want to be loved. And that, that was part of the reality. I realized I could not give that person what they wanted. And even more so, that's not what I wanted. I began to see the future. You know, if you just sit and look, you can see where things are gonna go. And I was like, that's not where I wanna go. And with that level of clarity, I decide to cut ties. And it was so liberating and freeing. This person did try to do a ritual type of practice. Say, hey, we ended, let's, let's for closure, let's do a ritual. I was like, nah, I'm done. I'm not doing that. I didn't even answer. I was just so like, I'm good. And uh, again, the, the level of liberation and freedom, I, I saw where it allowed me to kind of bump up to the next level or even more so that guilt and appeasement began to do, 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 decrease even more. I want to speak a moment about the idea of you feeling not free. So 
we are not the only nation of people, black people are not the only people who have ever been enslaved, mm -hmm. but we have been taught by our enslavers to enslave. Yes. So we have learned to enslave each other through manipulation, through outright enslavement, through uh, offering bribes through a variety of different ways and appeasement, which is what you're speaking about, is the idea of collapsing under the weight of what people are offering to enslave you. I'd like to touch on that. Uh, I would ask my question, why is it that almost everybody, except of Islam, is trying to enslave me? And then, of course, with the understandings, it was, what is it in me that's allowing them to? What is it in me that will as you say, crumble or acquiesce to their will and control. It's very much like what happens when you tie an animal to a tree and he has six foot of leash and he learns that he cannot relieve beyond the six foot of leash. And then you remove the leash and he never leaves the six foot space. It's like our brains, things that we agree to, things that we have accepted, as truth or as our experience, we continue to revisit that unless we take a moment to awaken to the other possibilities. It's like thinking that the world is six foot around the tree and there's no other world, there's no other person, there's no other experience, there's no other opportunity for joy, there's no other opportunity for greatness except with what's in front of you. So that requires us to think beyond our experience. It requires imagination. We can imagine a life of an artist. We can imagine the life of a healer. We can imagine beyond the one person that is in front of us that we have brought forward to help us move through this idea it is that everyone should deserve a blessing for coming into our life once we have broken through it and moved beyond it, we thank them for bringing us to the point where we could grow beyond whatever the experience is. At Of The Sun, we understand that committed relationships are the ultimate experience and the most desirable experience. However, it may take a while to get to that. In the level of your own congruency, determines how quickly or how long that it takes you to sink into a relationship that is satisfying. So I think that's where we're at with this. Well, certainly. Is that you were in a relationship, it was working for you until it wasn't. Well, one of the things that happened is I began to realize I didn't know what I want. I was just taking any and everything that came my way. Once you know what you want, it changes how you look at everything. It's like, ooh, I don't want that, I don't want that. And it wasn't just the relationships, it was with food, it was everything. You know, how I wanted to change uh, my role within the business, it, it was everything. And uh, again, I, I see where if you don't know what you want, <laughs> any and everything may try to manipulate you and, get, and utilize your energy for their own purposes. This is so key because everyone's shopping. It's like, oh, I think I'll take one of those. <laughs> I'll take one of those, I think I'll take one of those, and then they have a string of things that they don't really know that they want, or the reality is, is that we should call for what we want. Yes. You want to be cherished? Start being in meditation every day and feel, what does it feel like to be cherished? What does it feel like to be loved? What does it feel like to be supported? Instead of going out and someone says, ooh, I'll take one of those, you can come on home with me. That's a different experience than calling for the experience you want to have. You had an experience where you had were clear on what you wanted, so you didn't get what you wanted. You got what someone else was picking out of the store when you yeah. were like the puppy in the window. <laughs> See, I'll take I'll take two of those. Bah, bah. <laughs> yeah. But what now, and I have been teaching this to everyone, including my own children, call for what you want. Yes. Call for the feeling that you want to have amongst people where you love being with the people you're with, that you are honored, you are respected, and you are fulfilled. And what does that feel like? Because we have to imagine it if we haven't had it. If you haven't had that experience of 
someone, whatever the thing that's valuable to you, if you haven't had that experience, you have to imagine what would it feel like if I had a person who was supportive of me. Yes. That wouldn't even uh, stay in the room where someone was saying something bad about me. What would that feel like? Well, you have a relationship like that. I do. (laughs) Well, you are supported. So, and this is what a person can work on themselves is like, what do you bring to the table? You want to be with someone who's this, that, and the other? What are you bringing to the table? Are you bringing, I'm going to support them, I'm going to back them up, I'm going to help them, I'm going to be what's needed in the relationship that satisfies me, which will nourish them. Yes. And so that's, that's where we are in this. Yes, so what was the final thing that happened? Well, the final thing that happened with that experience Again, I was free. I was completely removed from that. And again, this this upgrade and I don't have to be locked into what someone else wants for me. Because again, this this was my reality all throughout my life. And I, I could even see through the lineage my, my family members going through the same thing, dropping into guilt, dropping into appeasement. So that was in me. And uh, <laughs> fast forward. I mean, I kind of want to skip to current present time because in respect of the time, (laughs) where uh, I'm so free of guilt and appeasement. I don't do what I don't want to do. I do what I want to do. And that's reflected in everything, how I teach, how I dress, how I speak. Uh, You know, and you were asking me earlier, like, you want to talk about why you dress this way? Because it's it's a thing. And uh, this is a, we, we would like to hear why it is that you represent yourself this way to us because this is a result of all of the stories and more that things that we're not told is what we're seeing, the visual interpretation of who you are, which is very distinctive. You're an artist, you're working in the spiritual realms, and you're free. Yes. You're a free man. <laughs> yes. Oh, so, will you tell us about nothing. tell us about how this how you um, moved into this experience? So it was a process over time. It didn't happen overnight. Uh, now, of course, throughout my life, I always dressed kind of eclectic, right? And uh, but there was still a little of appeasement. I, I gotta wear a suit or a blazer because you know how will people perceive me? And you know. Looking in the mirror, what are they going to think? Okay, I need to wear this because I got to present myself a certain way for people on the street or people who step into the office. And again, as a byproduct of my freedom, I like my clothes are loose and flowy because I'm free. You know, it's a a representation of how I feel internally. Also, homage to the ancestors as well. You know, the ancestors would dress in these type of garbs also. Uh, But again, I feel that I am expressing my truth, you know, and... I encourage everyone to do that, to move into that space where you're not concerned about what another person thinks about you because it really don't matter. At the end of the day, it, all that matters is how you feel. And like when you can get that, oh my gosh, it, it changes everything in our reality. It changes the, the opportunities that we attract, whether they're financial opportunities, relationship opportunities, uh, the, the acquaintances that sur- you surround yourself with. And, the, the response that I get from the outside world, it's different than before. Like, straight up, people are always, oh, man, you look great, or I love that hat, man, or where'd you get those shoes from? Or, I can't, I don't know, man, I, I just source online, I can't tell you. I, you can't get this from a mall, you know, but I, I see other people inspired by my freedom. Yes. You know, like, that's, that's what speaks. And I think that's the key, and that's probably how we will end the show, unless you have something else, is that it is freedom that we are looking at, and the level of how we can determine the levels of freedom a person is operating in often is by how they look and how they're representing themselves, as in our world, people don't recognize they're wearing a uniform. There are uniforms. There's certain kinds of uniforms that people are wearing, all you have to do is go to the mall and count how many people have on exactly the same thing. And 
a different brand, but it's uh, all the stores are full of the same thing in exactly the same way, and we all perceive ourselves as being different. But the reality is, when you see somebody who really looks different, they look really different and free. So we'd like to wrap this up by saying it's wonderful to be with the free. Oh, sure is. <laughs> I like what Harriet said. I'll be free or I'll die. Thank you. In Lakesh, in Veritas.